Hello, welcome back to Vendor Sushi Live Learning. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the creation of displacement map that's basically based on these uh, gribbles, all these um, all these things, all these boxes in the middle that you can see here. That's basically uh, generated using spread chalks and it is being sandwiched uh, between these two planes. And through this method of baking, we, we basically able to generate this uh, displacement map so that's actually the idea it's actually pretty basic um, I saw this um, method from one of a uh, video by Oliver Villar I think uh, not blend swap what's the other one I forgot uh, but I found out um, this uh, blend swap called Gribble workshop uh, if you google search it you will find it and inside it, it has a blend with a lot of um, kind of high-res models. That's kind of a uh, randomized and and also it's um, it is using particle instancers kind of to generate these gribbles for displacement map. And it's it is very high-res and I, I really like it. I kind of wanna emulate it using Spreadshock. So that's the idea. Um, let me try baking this and see. If this is still working, okay, this seems to be working. So I'll start from scratch actually, and I'll kind of will emulate the the process um, explained by Oliver Villar and also um, shown at the Blend uh, Gribble Workshop. I think it's called yeah Gribble Workshop. If you find it on Blend Swap, you will find a blend, and it gives you one system. Uh, ready for you to use. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna use spread chalk and random boxes. So box, and right away I will use viewer B mesh, and gonna give an output. Gonna save this real quick. This is spread chalk um, box sandwich. So the idea here is to generate like just generate bunch of boxes. We're gonna use matrix in, plug into this guy. We have this box here, and so we're gonna use random random vector and randomize input vertices. These two are really handy, they work um, together to generate a scatter of points. So if we just use the random vector, we're gonna as usual we're gonna get random boxes. At random position like so I'll turn on matcap and ambient occlusion so it's a bit prettier so we have 35 um, boxes all the same size and they're randomly scattered we can scale it like that but as you can see we only see uh, we only get like a kind of spherical um, scattering if you want to randomize further you use this guy and just randomize further like that. Uh, the funny thing is that you can also zero this guy and then zero the Z and you get scatter that's more or less in the only in the X and Y axis. So that's, that's kind of nice as well. Maybe you want to use that. And you can on top of this you can also have uh, rotations using the same kind of setup. This one to control the the scaling actually not rot uh, not rotation scaling I mean so yeah that's controlling the scaling in X and Y maybe in the Z as well kind of nice to have it on the floor but in this case it doesn't matter too much so let's see. Have a bit of scaling here there seed I think if we bake this. Um, we're gonna end up with 35 objects. I don't want that. I want to have a single object, so I'm gonna cut this. Gonna use apply matrix matrix apply, and just plug all this in. And they should be joined into a single object. But you can see there's some kind of a flip normal objects. That's a no, not a good thing, and that's because of this uh, random random vector plug into the scale so to fix that we just use a vector out and vector in 
and absolute. Maybe there's another way to do this, but um, this is the one way I, uh, that I understand. It will work. Okay, so we are pretty much done with our random boxes. Now let's just set up the uh, the box sandwich. We just need a plane. Start with a plane. The first one is gonna be the floor, I think. And the second one is gonna be uh, for the displacement map. I'm gonna duplicate it and move it up and hit tab edit mode u unwrap and we are done actually uh, it's better to have the image editor here so we have the uv here the uv of the plane and we want to create a new map we call it displace map okay all right i think we are ready now Basically, select the our gribbles of boxes and then the floor, and select our displace map um, objects last, and then you just go to under bake and select displacement, and turn on selected to active. The active object is still the last one being selected, and then we just hit bake and hopefully that's generated something. So it does generate something, uh, but can't see too much. Maybe I need to play around with the distance. I believe I also need, um, if I turn off the distance to zero and turn on normalize, we should generally get a, some kind of displacement map. So I think that's that's pretty good. So I don't know the, the exact um, optimized way to get the displacement, but this is um, what I have in mind basically uh, very very simple basic but let's say we want to have like um, hundred or maybe a thousand of these objects it's pretty easy to do just maybe I will make 500 and see see how the gribble looks like now uh, maybe make the floor bigger this one move it down a little bit bake it again this time I'm not getting anything oh, okay I need to select the objects I always always forget about that we need to select the floor objects the gribble and then our objects the last and then bake it there you go so we have like a more or less like a displacement map that we can use um, further for example, if I duplicate this guy and then give it like a, some subdivision, make it simple, and then on top of that, I will use a displace modifier and gonna create new texture and then give it a this displace map. So now we started to see how this worked for us increase the displacement really high and then so we have this so this guy is actually based on the gribble that we created using sphere chalk so I guess this can be useful uh, it's not like a new technique or whatever but uh, the way we can generate the gribble which is this object here really at this point um, it's up to you uh, how to creatively generate this uh, gribble even just boxes can give us such uh, interesting details. Um, if I open up the Gribble workshop, uh, so in this one, um, there there are already a bunch of objects that can be used as a uh, Gribble. This is actually really really cool setup there. If I go to layer number two, um, in here layer number two and number three provide some really interesting um, Gribbles objects. This gribble objects is really something that you can generate procedurally using Sphere Chalk and you can even get more variations if you like. This one kind of uh, also this this thing will work as it is, you know. Um, there's also layer number 
three, I think. So that's the result of displacement, I think. So there's another layer. Yeah, um, it's basically layer of layer of this uh, complicated um, mechanical looking objects that you combine together to generate this uh, gribble kind of displacement map. Very cool, very cool setup. I really like this method. I always um, want to try this and just today I kind of understand it a little bit better. If you know any uh, like um, like the more efficient optimized way to create this map, uh, just simply let me know. But I like the uh, um, this idea of being able to just scatter all these random objects using SphereJob add-on for example and then you turn it into displacement map and it's very very powerful um, uh, let's go back to the box sandwich and it crashes but anyway that's pretty much it for this live running um, hopefully you find this useful um, it's an idea if you um, have anything to add just let me know in the comment section below and thanks again for tuning in I'll see you in the next video bye